Welcome to Musubi University. Hi, I am your host, uh, Michihiro Matsumoto. Our job build a bridge across troll waters, east, west, north, and south. Uh, together with uh, my colleague, Michael, uh, say hello to hello. friends. Today, yes. uh, we're going to talk about uh, privacy. Ooh, important topic. Uh, important topic. Uh, do you enjoy privacy here in Osaka? I'm, I have privacy, a, a certain degree of privacy. Although I will say that I find it to be less than when I lived in Hiroshima. Hiroshima, you have more privacy. Yes. Meaning... Meaning that um, in just my everyday life, probably I would say I was a little more kind of anonymous in my everyday life, walking down the street, going to the grocery store. When I go to the grocery store, the people who work in the grocery store recognize me more mm. than when I lived in Hiroshima. Mm. And people tend to be a little more outgoing in Osaka than in Hiroshima. And they want to interact and connect with you and know about you more than in Hiroshima. Back in Hiroshima, yes. uh, Michael, uh, when you're walking down the street, mm -hmm. you must be walking under prying eyes. Here's a guy in America who bombed uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Mm. So did you, did you get kind of a cold stare at the gaijin? There, there, there are, I would say, certain techniques that Japanese people use to be able to stare without looking like they're staring. Um, I grew pretty accustomed to that, I think, fairly yeah. quickly mm -hmm. and just ignored it. As an American, can I get into your private part okay. of your heart? Okay. You're an American yes. who are proud to say that we bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki to save lives. You grew up listening to that. Yeah, grew up listening to that, yes. And then what came over you when you came down to Hiroshima? Um, I kind of saw what happened and witnessed the destruction of the bombing. So it it slightly changed how I was feeling. I think as I got as a child, you just grew up with a very kind of fantastical version of what happened. And then you learn more about what actually happened. So your opinion changes slightly over the years. How so? Um, you just learn more and you become, I think, more connected with the humanity of people. And you realize that, you know, these were humans that were killed. And so you become a little more empathetic towards that. I heard your speech, mm -hmm. one of the most, uh, if not the most, emotional speech oh, thank you. that I've heard, and tearful speech, mm -hmm. and I saw tears rolling down the cheeks. That was the best speech ever. Thank what you. came over you? The, your mm -hmm. the mind did change. Yes. And then the first hit bombed, mm -hmm. Japan surrendered. Yeah. And you you were kind of euphoric. We Americans did it. Yes. And then what? Um, did that linger on? Seeing Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Oh my God. For some people, it lingered on. I mean, there are still some people today who will defend the bombings as absolutely necessary. I think for a lot of other people, they see it as being immoral. And I think a lot of people just look at the facts that have kind of appeared after that. To, and it makes them question whether it really was appropriate or was it really necessary to end the war. Mm. And so it raises doubts for people. Mm -hmm. Can a case be made against that, saying that it takes two to tango, all is fair in love and war. You can't put the existentiary mm. finger at one person, 
Japan, you lost it. Yeah. Americans won it. Yeah. But kids can't be made both in war and romance. Love, mm -hmm. all's fair. All is fair. But you don't kick someone when they're down. Mm. That's, that's, that's my rule. Don't kick someone when they're down. Mm. So was Japan, and I think that's the kind of the crux of the question is, was Japan down or not? Mm. Mm. And I think which side of that you look at kind of determines how you feel overall about the bombings. You mean uh, everyone has to turn a blind eye to it? Look the other way. Nothing happened. Well, that's or most is people. asking probing questions with the best way to hurt mm -hmm. yeah. other people. Yes. Is that, does that be, uh, is that an invasion of privacy? Yes. Private part of it. Tell yeah. me a little bit about people refuse to mm -hmm. zip up the tooth. Yes. Is that a good attitude, a bad attitude? Pretend is that I don't know. Um, I think that's a bad attitude. Hmm. Well, it's privacy, by the way. Privacy? Why it matters? Mm. A lot of people probably will disagree, but I think privacy is being able to have some kind of control over your personal information. Who hmm. knows what about you? What you are willing to share about yourself what you aren't willing to share about yourself. You write a diary. I do not person. write a diary. You don't diary. write diary. No, I do not. Why not? Um, I've never had an... I've just never thought of... I had a need to write a diary. You said it's a girl's... Uh, <laughs> yeah, did you I put your that. foot in your mouth? <laughs> um, slightly, yes. <laughs> No, it's growing up. That's the image that you have: is mm. girls keep diaries. Keep diary. Um, but no, I, I, the truth is, a lot of you know, I would say like Fortune 500 CEOs and scientists and stuff. They all keep diaries, and it's a very important part of their day. So, does your wife keep a diary? She has a blog. I, that's I think. A modern Blog is day. A diary. It's a, it's modern well, day it's equivalent, a, I would say. Equivalent, but not the same thing. What happens if you pry into your wife's diary? She will get mad. She probably would, but I would never think of doing that in the first place. Mm. Because you want to protect her privacy. Yeah. But what happens mm. if you're in a remote part of town mm. in, uh, in the middle of uh, Nagano Prefecture? I remember having roughed it mm -hmm. and people's eyes on me and my wife came we spent a night everyone watching us mm -hmm. through pores it turned out as it turned out it was just a cottage for silkworm mm -hmm. and there's no law against uh, peeping mm -hmm. uh, at the private life it's not a crime no not out there okay. in, in the remote part mm. of that. And there was a story, I keep forgetting the name of the woman who's the British perhaps, uh, spent many years uh, in and out mm. of the white town. And and it was pouring, looking at this. Mm. Hey, this isn't a family shore, you know. So there's a place where privacy, uh, breaking the law of privacy isn't a crime at all. Mm-hmm. So, uh, now, can I assume mm -hmm. that there will be a return to the primitive life without any privacy? That's what it looks like to me. Already? Yeah. Is that a far-fetched argument? No, no it's not far-fetched at all. Just imagine mm -hmm. w when that age comes. Now, uh, the economist says uh, 
It's very interesting article. Mm. Collusion and collision. Collusion and mm. collision. Uh, collusion like this. Yeah. Collusion like yes. this. It is a Disney, Amazon, Facebook, mm. Google, Walmart, Apple, Alibaba, Tencent. Mm. They are fighting each other tooth and nail. Yes. And there's no harmony. So if this goes on, there'll be big power like Amazon, Facebook, uh, trying to keep an eye on you, yes. snooping around uh, yeah, all this, this <coughs> annihilation mm. of uh, privacy. Right. That's more horrendous. Oh, that's, that is horrendous. Yeah. Uh, you're talking about online. There's <coughs> going to be no <coughs> privacy soon. Um, there's already really no privacy. <laughs> no privacy? Yeah. But you are tech savvy. I do somewhat. Oh, I can yes. tell you. I can tell you this. When it comes to Facebook, hmm. even if you don't have a Facebook account, you have a Facebook account. That's bad. That goes against the uh, grain of the uh, small town community. Yeah, here in Osaka, you know, hmm. there's areas where, with lots of rustic uh, hospitality. Yes. That's on the good side. On the flip side, everyone watching you. you know? You're watching under the watchful eyes of those people. Yeah. Watching you. Mm -hmm. And then if you, uh, a city boy, kind of drifting into town, everyone watching you. And, uh, and they might say, look, uh, tell me the mm -hmm. truth. Tell me the whole truth. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, you are Mizuku Sai in Japanese expression. Mizuku Sai, what's friend for? Mm. But uh, we, we might be able to talk about the good intentions. The good intentions mean and uh, watching every movement you make yeah. because you're friends. Uh -huh. So there's a fine line between privacy and non privacy. Yeah. Haven't you given any thought to that? The fine line, there's a boundary between you. Mm -hmm. We're friends, but this is not necessary. There has to be a fine line between your personal boundaries. I, I, I have my private zone mm -hmm. boundary. When there's a clash of boundaries, there's some kind mm -hmm. of adjustment between the fence or a hedge mm -hmm. between two different people. Yeah. How can you go about solving that? Mm, um, I think it's a matter of respect. Mm. You have to respect other people's boundaries. That, that's very interesting. You know, because it's like in America, we have the Constitution and we have constitutional rights, but there's a saying that your constitutional rights end at my nose mm. so you have the right to do something but you don't have the right to impose that on me so that's where i see it is you're you're free to push someone's privacy up until the point where they they say stop that has to be a fine line between area yeah, With, within your uh, eyesight, but beyond that, mm -hmm. it goes out of your sight. Yeah. And can you detect that area of fine line? Even uh, Japan, we so have, if you don't <clears throat> see the line yeah, yeah, between yeah. two boundaries, uh, he mm. just doesn't get get it. I saw a cookie, I mean, mm. I, and you're getting along with the wife of the person, but you have to sort of maintain a cautious mm -hmm. uh, distance uh, from him as a civilized company. Yeah. But if you get a little bit too far from it, mm -hmm. so sometimes there's a line you have to go a little bit beyond that at the risk of losing decency. Yeah. So this is this brings up something that I find incredibly strange in Japan, mm. which in in terms of privacy, mm. to me, especially at least outside of Osaka, privacy seems to be very high. Mm. But then, if you walk around the street, 
people hang their clothes outside to dry in view of everybody which to me isn't very private to me that's that's something that should be more private mm. than a lot of other things are your clothes and your underwear but people hang those outside japanese people are private it's a weird thing because they're private but japanese people are willing to expose things right that i would consider private but at the same time <sighs> most other japanese people are willing to ignore Ooh. that being exposed so there still is kind of this sense of privacy because there's a balance between what is being shown and what is being heard. Hmm. That's very interesting. We have a very strong sense of privacy and yet we have a biological need to get out of the stress. Yes. Uh, the sense of privacy, you know, sometimes you get to the point where you really, uh, can I say, chill out. Mm -hmm. Let's have fun. Yes. And let the, paint the whole town red tonight. You know, sometimes uh, take off your clothes and <laughs> yes. bad, uh, who cares and mm. forget about the privacy. Uh, it's a lot of fun, but in the eyes of other persons, hey, what's going on here? He's a ordinary, solid person living a decent life. All of a sudden, turn indecent. Mm. That's the best way to make friends in Osaka in particular. <laughs> oh, he saw himself, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's not scary. Yeah. You know, going naked, yeah. right in front of your eyes. And everyone mm. says, he's big. Yeah. You wouldn't call him big, is he? No. You look <laughs> so <clears throat> talking about the privacy, mm -hmm. and there's an area where you're not supposed to enter. Yes, and how can you tell the fine line between your territory mm -hmm. and the other territory? Mm -hmm. How did you develop that sense in Japan? In Japan, in, in Japan, been around in Tokyo and Osaka. Can you tell the difference between Tokyoite sentiment yes. and the Kansai Osaka sentiment? Yes, and I would say it is kind of weird because Tokyo is Eastern Japan, Osaka is Western mm. Japan. Mm -hmm. But if you go to America, you have the East Coast and the West Coast, mm. and I would say that it's inversed. Meaning what? Meaning that the, um, I grew up most of my life on the East Coast, and I would say the East Coast people oh. are very similar to Osaka. Really? They're very open. They're very vocal. They're very friendly and interactive with people. But when you get to the West Coast, which I also lived in California, mm -hmm. to me it reminds me similar to uh, Tokyo. Really? I have an entirely different opinion, you know. Also oh, really? In yeah. California. Yeah. Uh, and the state of the sun, sunlight. Yes. And people can afford to uh, uh, laid back, mm. be laid back. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Cares. True. And uh, Kansai people talk a lot. Mm. blow a trumpet. The Californians uh, uh, talk with a lot of hot air. But... The California and Osaka are pretty close. Yeah, yeah. In sense, I, I see that. I yeah. see that. Why do you think the East Coast is more uh, Kansai people? Um, they're, they're, I personally, I find people on the East Coast to be more friendly. I really? find them to be more direct. I find people in California to be pretty phony. Really? Is it much, I, much like I think people from Tokyo are, are pretty phony. Everything's like about appearance. A, a little bit tacky, you know, yeah. pa, if not posh. Yeah. So in that respect, oh, the Californians are like that. Yes. Mm. And they're not really that social. Mm. They're only with like a, a close circle of friends. They have their close circle of friends. But when it comes to other people, everything is pretty standoffish. They have like this faux sense of friendliness to them, which is what I get from Tokyo. I don't get that in Osaka. Uh, in Tokyo, people are more regimented because they have a better degrees. 
Mm-hmm. Um, what? Kanto or mm-hmm. Tokyo or in big metropolitan cities for mm-hmm. that matter. You don't have to be honest, but you have to look honest. Yes. Appearance counts a great deal. That's Hollywood. That's Hollywood. <laughs> Hollywood. <laughs> Good. How was it in California? Yeah. Uh, now I'm beginning to understand that. I had a different opinion. Yeah, but, yeah. you know. I see no. I see your point of view. <laughs> yeah. I see your point of view as well. Tokyo yeah. and yeah. the East Coast, pretty very civilized, uh, suave, and, and uh, I, I may have a different opinion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's oh, this is just a, okay. Yeah, different, different opinions, different cultures, mm-hmm. different experiences. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, you're from Osaka. From Osaka. You and grew the, up. Yeah, the, born and raised in Osaka. I grew up in Tokyo. I mm-hmm. spent the 50 years. And then I coming back here. Mm-hmm. I spent uh, uh, only two years mm-hmm. back in Osaka. And I have developed uh, mixed emotions yeah. about the differences. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I feel very comfortable staying here in Osaka. This is, oh, yeah, this was mm-hmm. uh, me. Yeah, uh, half a century ago, mm-hmm. it's a deja vu all over again, and yet, uh, and the invasion of privacy goes on. Uh, they are not aware of it. Mm-hmm. In the middle of the night, they keep coming in, in droves, mm-hmm. you know, trying to keep me up. Hey, wait a minute, I'm not a criminal, please, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, you felt that way in Tokyo. Yeah. Tokyo, I didn't. No, 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 no. In Osaka. In Osaka. Yes. Okay. Yes, in the Tokyo. Uh, who cares? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know who is living next door. <laughs> mm. Mm. So you felt like that you had a much higher degree of privacy in higher Tokyo. Degree. Yeah, in Tokyo. Because who cares? Mm-hmm. And and I hated when I came back here. They would have said Tokyo people, Tsumetai, I see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then yeah, I I thought I agree with them. Like, Osaka people are too. Uh, uh, can I mm-hmm. say uh, clubby? Uh, yeah. Hobnobbing with each other. Yeah. The Tokyo people who cares. Yeah. Don't pay any attention to it. Mm. And it, after 50, 50 years later on, yesterday, I, <laughs> that was my birthday, mm-hmm. and every person I did, oh, my toes have a tongue <laughs> and everyone knew it. Yes, <laughs> Why? yes, yes. yes. <laughs> this happens. Yeah, that's not bad news. No, 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 no. This is good. Yes. Everyone, <laughs> you know, cares about me. So this brings me to the good intention. Mm-hmm. The good intention is, yes. you know, tapping on the shoulder. Mm-hmm. I, I'm on your side and uh, I'm watching you mm-hmm. from every corner. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> so we're going to get into the, uh, the good intentions. Yeah. But good intentions are good, as yes. good as they say they are. We're going to get into that next week. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, folks.